New York City! Get a rope. Yeah, get a rope to tie your stuff on top of your car and get the heck out of here. Unless you've been completely isolated from the rest of us, you've heard about how bad things are in New York City right now. It's a total mess. A lot of New York City was built on business, entertainment, and tourism. And now that we're all dealing with a pandemic, business is left and so have the tourists. And due to the health crisis and recent riots, a lot of the entertainment, small businesses, and what makes New York, New York, are gone. A lot of it for a long time, mister. Sure, the city of New York has some good places, but there's a ton of bad areas here as well. They're all over the place. And since the NYPD is cutting its budget soon, these places that we're going to talk about are going to get way worse than they already are. It's likely you're not watching this because you're moving to New York. Nobody is right now. You probably want to look at bad areas because you enjoy watching a sinking ship, which is so mean to you. Or you're a New Yorker who enjoys seeing other people who have it worse than you do, which is so mean of you. Anyways, I'm going to give you people what you want. So let's sit back on the subway as we go through New York's worst neighborhoods. Okay, here we are on the six train going to our first stop. That guy over there is totally giving me the creeps. Hopefully he doesn't get off on our stop. And here it is. Our first stop is in Soundview. We're in the South Bronx. Soundview is a neighborhood which is roughly bordered by the Cross Bronx Expressway, White Plains Road, Lacombe Avenue, and the Bronx River. The first housing project constructed in the Bronx was here back in 1941. Now, there's 10 public housing units here and more than 140 public housing buildings. In the 70s, white flight helped this area fall into rapid decay, and the crack epidemic made it even more terrible in the late 80s. Now, a few years ago, Soundview may have been in our top five list of New York's worst neighborhoods, but they've kind of cleaned this place up a little bit. It's been gentrified some, and some middle-class folks have moved in, the people who want to stay in the Bronx but don't want to be in the worst hoods, the places we'll talk about in a bit. But the crime is still really high here. If you search News 12 for mentions of Soundview, you'll find article after article highlighting various attacks and robberies and thefts. And this goes back only a few weeks. For fun, you can fish along the Bronx River, which is kind of gross, or you can go to Kmart. Back on the subway we go. We're on the three train, just minding our own business, worried about how safe it's gonna be when we arrive. And we're here. This is the Rockaway Ave station in Brooklyn. We're in Brownsville. This neighborhood is down near Crown Heights, East Flatbush, and East New York. Brownsville is one of the few neighborhoods in New York that's remained relatively untouched by gentrification. The buildings in this area are older and the crime rates lower than its peak in 2012 when Time Magazine called it one of the most dangerous hoods in the whole city. But it's still bad here. As in, when the sun goes down, you make a choice. Do I leave Brownsville or do I stay and risk my life? No, it's getting a little bit better. The hope is that gentrification will reach deep into this neighborhood. Since they built the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, neighborhoods around here have improved. When gentrification does take hold in Brownsville, that's just going to push the poor people up to the Bronx, into Westchester County, into areas like Mount Vernon, or even send them far away into places like South Philly. Train's leaving. I'm sure we'll be back to Brooklyn at some point. We're on the E train now, heading over to Queens. I hope this lady doesn't turn around again. She's got bad breath. Here we are, Jamaica, Queens. They're also cleaning this place up too. Once known for mom and pop shops, family owned restaurants and single family homes, a lot of Jamaica's now Chipotle and high rises. They even have a Starbucks here now. In fact, a lot of Queens is cleaned up sacked. However, there's still a lot of projects here in Jamaica and new units aren't all for wealthy people. Jamaica's in a neighborhood that falls into New York's Exclusionary Housing Designated Areas Program, which means 30% of new units are set aside for poor people. That's kept crime levels up here, and the place still looks terrible in many areas, especially in South Jamaica. If you wind up in South Jamaica, you're like, what am I doing here? Did I make a wrong turn? Drug dealers, people strung out or drunk, it's all over the place. Crime-wise, it's getting a little bit better, but shootings are still common here. It was so bad here that they shut Jamaica high down completely due to persistent violence and a sub 50% graduation rate. And how bad's it gonna be here when the police are defunded more? A lot of the crime here was stopped by plainclothes officers and they took a huge hit with the new budget that was just passed. 
A lot of people in New York kind of wish they had Rudy again. He brought major crime down in New York by two-thirds when he was in office. We're on the five now. People are really starting to get on our nerves. At least no one's breakdancing. Hey, our stop. We're in the South Bronx neighborhood. This place is beat up. Incomes here are like 28K a year, which is like what people in rural Kansas get. But this is New York City. So you can imagine how much the population struggles in the South Bronx neighborhood. It's like parts of Harlem right across the river. Lots of drug use and prostitutes and drug dealers. You can't take your shoes off and walk on the sidewalks here because of what you might step on or in. It's not uncommon to hop out and get some chicken nuggets and see somebody shooting up in the bathroom. They aren't even trying here in South Bronx. Let's get out of here before we get jacked. Right back on the five again to transfer to the three and head down to Brooklyn again. I could sure go for a slice right about now. We're at the end of the line in East New York. If you want to feel like you're in a war movie, go to East New York. Think Boys in the Hood, Juice, Menace to Society. People in East New York are straight up thugs. And there's no reason why people should be acting like this either. They don't go to school. They don't do anything. They're like, I grew up here and this is all I know and this is all I'm going to do. There's 91,000 people in this neighborhood and hardly any of them make more than 30K a year. It had the highest murder rate in the city not too long ago. And of course, with violence and poverty comes drugs and stupidity. The high school kids who do show up have to pass through metal detectors to get into class. And that is East New York, not a good place at all. Off we go. This D train isn't too bad. They clearly just cleaned it and nobody's farted in it yet. We have an hour and a half to kill, so. But due to editing magic, we're here in five seconds. This is the Fordham neighborhood of the Bronx. You have about a 1 in 33 chance of being the victim of some kind if you live in or stay in Fordham. Home prices are 62 k for a reason, and the fourth lowest of all NYC neighborhoods. That's like buying a home in Nebraska, but this is far from Nebraska, pal. You can sort of walk around here in the daytime and not feel like you're going to get robbed. At least that was before the NYPD shrunk in size. But at night, it's like zombie land with all the drugged out people and the filth. If you live in Fordham, you can go to the zoo for fun. But this place is kind of a zoo already, so you don't really even have to do that. But at least you're not right down the street in Claremont. There's some housing projects in this hood that even the police won't go into. Projects like the Morris houses are frightening, and many other streets here aren't projects by definition, but might as well be. And it's so sad that in today's America, the poor live in such terrible conditions in the middle of what's supposed to be our finest city. Did you hear about the father who was shot in broad daylight while holding his daughter's hand? That was in Claremont. We're not going very far to our next neighborhood, so we'll just take the bus. It's been a long trip, and boy, these dogs are barking. We're in Tremont, which is right next to Crotona, which is also a terrible hood, making this whole part of the middle of the Bronx one big ghetto mess. In Tremont, there have been over 500 combined cases of theft and assault in the last six months alone. And the worst part is there's hardly been any arrests. Not even for vandalism. That's not surprising. The cops are just kind of letting things go here now. Drugs and sex crimes are commonplace as well. This neighborhood is two-thirds Dominican, 27% black, and 1% white. Why are they getting rid of the police when crime is so bad here? That's a good question, Mappy. If you were mayor of New York, what would your policy be? I think we need more police. We need law and order in this country right now. Mappy, I think there's quite a few New Yorkers who would seriously vote for you for mayor. Mappy versus Del Blasio would be a very interesting election. Man, Mappy for mayor? Somebody start that campaign right now. Okay, a couple more quick bus trips and we can finally head home. We've seen a lot already, but Mott Haven is a true ghetto New York City hood. Mott Haven is about as deep into the South Bronx as you can get, right across the river from East Harlem. Now this hood is famous for its murder rate. You can certainly find a methadone clinic here, and it's probably not a top choice on where to raise a family. Back in 2016, a poor lady was murdered by a machete after trying to be nice to her neighbor. They called it the murder in the 4-0. That's because Mott Haven is in the NYPD's 40th precinct. People here make about 25 k a year. And in New York City, that's like making $25 a year. Gangs, shootings, doesn't matter what time of day you're out there. The projects here are notoriously deplorable. The Mitchell houses have 2,000 apartments spaced out over 10 buildings. You know what's going on inside there. Or you don't know, but come on, you know. Now you're going to notice that many of these last worst hoods are in the Bronx. 
This is New York's 14th congressional district, represented by AOC. Where's the worst hood in New York City? Hunts Point is. Located in the Bronx, right along the East River, this ghetto little area of about 12,000 people takes the prize as being the worst place you can live in our nation's biggest city, people. The aggravated assault rate here is an insane 151 people per 100,000, and the arrest rate for rape has gone up by a factor of five, and more than one in 100 people here has been arrested and found guilty of some sort of crime. Like the rest of the city, crime here has gone down a little bit, but we'll see what happens when the NYPD backs off. I mean, can you imagine? There's a lot of homeless here too, and the homeless shelters are in terrible shape. Residents here have sort of tried, They've at least fought off plans to open more strip clubs in the area. And many here have complained about the crime for ages, but no one's really done anything. In fact, while other New York City boroughs have gentrified and improved crime rates, the Bronx has been kind of neglected. About 30% of Bronx residents live below the poverty line, the largest share of any of New York's 62 jurisdictions. And the Bronx remains one of the largest outdoor shooting ranges in the nation. Now that we've told you about the worst New York neighborhoods, we should tell you about the best NYC neighborhoods. Most people watching really won't care since they'll never move to New York City anyways. But for people in New York, they may be curious to know where they can move since this city's in turmoil right now. These are places to move if you can afford it. You probably can't. And with that, well, that's it. The worst neighborhoods in New York City and we didn't even get shot. Some of these places are getting better, bit by bit, but most of them have a long way to go to be considered livable by any standards. Many of them are, quite frankly, a zoo. Took the train to my old hood one day. Saw these street people just pissing their lives away. To the right and to the left, it's sad to me all the plight that's left to see. It's a tragedy. Where's AOC? She ain't done nothing for me. They're getting rid of the cops? That's a tragedy. I'm back, back in my New York Zoo. I'm back, back in my New York Zoo. I'm back, back in my New York Zoo. Back to my New York Zoo. To my New York Zoo. Thanks to Charlie Bo for letting me use footage from his Bronx drive through Charlie Bo's awesome. He has perhaps the best drive throughs of bad hoods on YouTube. You should subscribe to him at CharlieBo313. The link to his channel is in the description. Thanks, Sabrina, for helping us with the video. You're our new friend. Yes, she is, Mappy. Hey, guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great. You should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also click one of these videos or playlists for more. You can also now buy my songs on iTunes and other formats. Click the link in the description. Thanks for watching. And remember, while we all might have different views, we should all be nice to each other and try to make the US a better place in a positive way.